The pelvic skeleton is formed by the sacrum, coccyx, and by a pair of hip bones, the ilium, ischium, and pubis, along with four joints. Two sacroiliac joints between the ilium of the hip bones and the sacrum, and one sacrococcygeal joint between the sacrum and the coccyx. There are two important ligaments, the sacrospinous and the sacrotuberous, present one on each side. The gap enclosed by the bony pelvis is called the pelvic cavity. The female pelvis is adapted for childbearing and is a wider and flatter shape than the male pelvis. The female bony pelvis is divided into the false pelvis which is present above the pelvic inlet or brim. About the brim, we will visualize it later. And the true pelvis present below the pelvic inlet. It is the bony canal through which the fetus has to pass during childbirth. Therefore, the determination of the diameters of this canal is important to know the childbearing capacity of the mother. First, we talk about the true pelvis. It is composed of the inlet, the cavity, and the outlet. The boundary of pelvic inlet as you are seeing is formed from back to front on each side by sacral promontory, ala of the sacrum, sacroiliac joints, iliopectineal lines, iliopectineal emin eminences, upper border of the superior pubic rami, pubic tubercles, pubic crests and upper border of the symphysis pubis, respectively. There is an imaginary plane at the pelvic inlet called the plane of pelvic inlet, as you are seeing. It passes through the boundaries of the pelvic inlet, making an angle of 55 degrees with the horizon, angle of pelvic inclination. The pelvic inlet is the entrance door toward the birth canal. The dimensions of importance at the pelvic inlet are the anteroposterior diameters, the transverse diameters, and the oblique diameter. The anteroposterior there are three anteroposterior diameters based on the points present on the symphysis pubis. Number one, anatomical anteroposterior diameter. It is 11 cm which extends from the tip of the sacral promontory to the upper border of the symphysis pubis. Next, the obstetric conjugate which again extends from the tip of the sacral promontory to the most bulging point on the back of symphysis pubis which is about 1 cm below its upper border. It is the shortest anterior posterior diameter measuring 10.5 cm. In order to determine the narrowest fixed distance that the fetus would have to negotiate, the minimum anteroposterior diameter of the pelvic inlet is measured. Diagonal conjugate, which again extends from the tip of the sacral promontory to the lower border of the symphysis pubis. It is 1.5 cm longer than the true conjugate, which is 12.5 cm. The transverse diameters of importance at the pelvic inlet are number 1 the anatomical transverse diameter which is 13.5 cm between the farthest two points on the iliopectineal lines it lies 4 cm anterior to the promontory and 7 cm behind the symphysis it is the largest diameter in the pelvis the obstetric transverse diameter it bisects the true conjugate and is slightly shorter than the anatomical transverse diameter. The entrance of the fet fetus head into the pelvic excavation normally takes place through a rotation from the oblique diameter to the transversal diameter. The oblique diameters of importance at the pelvic inlet are Number 1. The sacrocotyloid diameters, which is 9 to 9.5 cm, 
It extends from the promontory of the sacrum to the right and left iliopectineal eminence. So, the right diameter extends at the right eminence and vice versa. Next, the right oblique diameter, uh, which is 12 cm. This is the diameter on which the fetus head presents. It extends from the right sacroiliac joints to the left iliopectineal eminence. Next, the left oblique diameter, which is 12 cm. It extends from the left sacroiliac joint to the right iliopectineal eminence. It is not labeled here. Now, you will see one more imaginary plane of importance called the plane of mid-cavity or the plane of greatest pelvic dimensions. It passes through the upper part of the great sciatic notch, the center of the acetabulum, the middle of the posterior surface of the symphysis pubis and the junction between second and third sacral vertebrae. It is a round plane with diameter of 12.5 cm. Internal rotation of the head occurs when the biparietal diameter occupies this white pelvic plane while the occiput is on the pelvic floor, that is, at the plane of the least pelvic dimension. Just below the plane of greatest pelvic dimensions is the plane of obstetric outlet, also called the plane of least pelvic dimensions. It passes from the lower border of the symphysis pubis anteriorly to the ischial spines laterally to the tip of the sacrum posteriorly. Now, we will visualize the boundaries of pelvic outlet which are of two types, anatomical outlet and the obstetric outlet. The boundary of anatomical outlet is lozenge shaped bounded on each side by the lower border of the symphysis pubis, pubic arch, ischial tuberosities, sacrotuberous and sacrospinous ligaments and the tip of the coccyx. The plane formed by the boundaries of anatomical outlet is called the plane of anatomical outlet. It consists of two triangular planes, the anterior and posterior sagittal plane, with one common base which is the bituberous diameter 11 cm. The posterior sagittal plane has its apex at the tip of the sacrum, Posterior sagittal diameter is 7.5 to 10 cm from the tip of the sacrum to the center of the bituberous diameter. The anterior sagittal plane has its apex at the lower border of the symphysis pubis. Its diameter is 7 cm from the lower border of the symphysis pubis to the center of the bituberous diameter. The dimensions of importance at the pelvic outlet are the two anteroposterior diameters and transverse diameters. Further in the anteroposterior diameters is the obstetric anteroposterior diameter which is 13 cm. It extends from the tip of the sacrum to the lower border of the symphysis pubis as the coccyx moves backward during the second stage of labor. 
anatomical anterior posterior diameter which is 11 cm is the second part of the two anterior posterior diameters. It extends from the tip of the coccyx to the lower border of the symphysis pubis. Next, the transverse diameters. They are further divided into two parts. The first one, the bispinous diameter which is 10 cm. It extends between the tips of the ischial spines. And the second, bituberous diameter which, which is 12, 11 cm. Which extends between the inner aspects of the ischial tuberosities. Obstetric outlet. It is a segment, the boundaries of which are the roof is the plane of least pelvic dimension, the floor is the anatomical outlet, anteriorly the lower border of symphysis pubis, laterally the ischial spines, posteriorly the coccyx, Now we talk about the pelvis axis, which are further divided into anatomical axis and obstetric axis. We talk about the anatomical axis here, which is also called the curve of Keras. It is an imaginary line joining the center points of the planes of the inlet, the cavity and the outlet. It is C-shaped with the concavity directed forwards. It has no obstetric importance. Next, we talk about the obstetric axis. It is an imaginary line that represents the way passed by the head during labor. It is J-shaped and passes downwards and backwards along the axis of the inlet till the is ischial spines where it passes downwards and forwards along the axis of the pelvic outlet. I am going to add some in extra information here. I'm going to talk about the obstetric conjugate. In order to determine the narrowest fixed distance that the fetus would have to negotiate, the minimum anteroposterior diameter of the pelvic inlet is measured. This distance is between the sacral promontory and the midpoint of pubic symphysis, where the pubic bone is thickest and is known as the obstetric conjugate or true conjugate. However, this measurement cannot be assessed clinically due to the presence of the bladder. Next, I am going to throw some light on the diagonal conjugate. The diagonal conjugate is the alternative measuring from the inferior border of the pubic symphysis to the sacral promontory and can be measured manually via the vagina. To do this, you use the tip of your middle finger to measure the sacral promontory and then using the other hand to mark the level of the inferior margin of the pubic symphysis on the examining hand. You then use the distance between the index finger and the pubic symphysis to measure the diagonal conjugate, ideally 11 cm or greater. In addition to measuring the diagonal conjugate, a mid-pelvis check is carried out. Here, the, clinic, the clinician is testing for straight side walls and measuring bispinous diameter, which is narrowest part of the pelvic canal. The width of this subpubic angle at the pelvic outlet can be determined by the distance between the ischial tubercities. 